In this video, you're going to see your professor risk life and limb to give you an interesting acceleration problem. Uh, let's go over and we're going to see uh, how fast I can accelerate on a motorcycle and see if we can find out things like uh, the acceleration and the final velocity. Uh, but first, let's go see the video. So now, um, we want to go ahead and try to find uh, both the, um, uh, the two things. Uh, one, of course, is I would really like to know what my acceleration is. Um, and the other thing I'd like to know is uh, what was my final velocity? I could have looked at my speedometer, but to be honest, I was concentrating on making sure I didn't crash into any of the things. Um, so uh, let's start with the acceleration first. So these problems go uh, are, are pretty straightforward. Basically, what we do is we figure out what we have, and then we go through and try to use the the the, the values that we have to solve the problem. Now, if you remember, and, and I haven't drawn a picture, I want to point out because I, I actually have my picture right there. Um, I will point out there is one thing we have to do before we start. Again, uh, we we always want to do this uh, anytime we're doing a problem. We're just to actually define uh, where our our x equals zero is. Um, I'm going to define x equals zero at the point that I began. Um, so, uh, so that's actually going to be my zero point or my x zero. So, so in other words, this is the zero that goes under the x. The subscript is indicating that's it, that it's at time zero, and I'm setting the the distance at time zero equal to zero or equal to zero meters. Um, and so that's that's going to be what's called my origin of the problem. That'll be important as we go along. So we can actually start writing that. We know that x0 is equal to 0 meters. Let's write else, what else we know. We also know um, the velocity at the beginning. Uh, that's 0 meters per second. I'm not moving at all when I start out. Uh, we know the time zero. We've actually set time zero equal to zero, uh, which again we kind of have to to use these equations. We have to set time zero, uh, the, the t zero, our initial time at zero. We also actually know that the the final time, so t final, is equal to uh, what is it, 4.13 seconds, and we know the x final. That's just equal to uh, our total distance, or the 35.6 meters. Okay, so those are all, whoa, let's try that again. Those are all the things we know. Okay, great. So um, now let's go through, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work my way from the top equation down, um, just underlining the things I know and circling the things I don't know. And if and if I only if there's only one thing I don't know, uh, then I can use that equation to solve it. Uh, so let's start with the top one. Um, first of all, x. We know x because that's our x final. So I'm going to underline that. We know x zero. That's zero meters. We know the initial um, x. We don't know the average velocity. We do know the final time. Okay, so there's only one thing underlined. Uh, so this would be a very good thing to use. We could actually use it to find the average velocity. Unfortunately, the average velocity is not what we're trying to find. We're actually trying to find acceleration or final velocity. Um, but we could use that equation just based on what we know to find the, the um, average velocity as that's the only one that's actually circled. Okay, but let's keep moving on. Let's see if we can do this in one step so we can just get the acceleration in one step. Um, average velocity. We don't know the average velocity. So this is the number two equation. So um, we don't know the average velocity. Um, we do know the initial velocity. That's just zero. We don't know the final velocity. And of course there's just two. This equation is not so useful. Uh, now if we did use equation one to find the average velocity, we could use this to find the final velocity. Uh, because we can plug it in and do simultaneous solving of equations. But again, this isn't exactly what we want. What, again, what we're trying to do is find acceleration. Okay, on to equation three. 
Uh, again, we don't know the final velocity, so we don't know that. We do know the we do know the initial velocity. We don't know the acceleration, and we do know the time. Again, there are two things circled, not so useful. Okay, moving on to equation four. We do know x at the end, that's our x final. So we do know that. We do know our initial x, that's just what we said equal to zero meters. We know our initial velocity, that's just zero. We're starting out at rest. We know our time, all right. One half is just a number. We don't know our acceleration, and we do know our time. Okay, this is the one that we want. As you can see, what we have is we have only one thing circled. There's only one thing in that equation that we don't know, which is the acceleration, okay, which is actually what we're trying to find, and we know everything else. So let's start using that equation. Okay, so I'm just going to write this down. x is equal to x0 plus v0t plus one-half at squared. Now, I'm going to go through and see if I can make this equation a little easier. One thing I can do right off the bat is actually just cross out x0 because that's equal to zero. I can also cross out this v0t term because v0, the initial velocity, my initial velocity is zero, I start out at rest, and because it's zero times t, zero times anything is just zero, so this whole term is zero as well. So now I have a much simpler equation, which is x is equal to one-half a t squared. Well, that's much easier to deal with. And now uh, I'm interested in the acceleration. Let's go ahead and solve for acceleration. So first I'm going to multiply both sides by two. So I'm going to get two x is equal to a t squared. And now I'm going to divide both sides by t squared. So then I'll get a is equal to two x divided by t squared. And that's our final equation. Now all we have to do is plug in our numbers. So we get um, two times, uh, let's, I, don't, I shouldn't use an x for times. Oops. Um, let's do two times, uh, what's our x final? That's 35.6 meters. Our time final is 4.13 seconds. And again, that's squared. And that should give us our acceleration. We can go ahead and plug all of those numbers into our calculator. And in the end, we get 4.17. And the units, if you see, are meters. We have a meter up at the top. And then we have a second squared at the bottom, so they're meter per second squared, which is the unit of acceleration. So that's a really quick way of how we can find my acceleration. Now we may try to want to try to find our final velocity. It turns out as we start finding things, our, our, the number of different ways that we can find things become much, much quicker. I think the easiest way to, to now find the final velocity would probably be to use equation three. Um, because now we actually have the acceleration and we can just find the final velocity. So let's go ahead and use equation three um, to find, so let's find v final. That's a thing, find v final. Um, so v is just equal to the initial velocity plus a t. Again, this is zero. And so we just get that v is equal to my acceleration. times the time, which is 4.13 seconds. And we find, if we go ahead and multiply that out, that I was going at the end around 17.2 meters per second, or around 35 miles per hour, which sounds um, correct. And again, our units work out, we get a meter per second squared times a second, gives us a meter per second. There are many other ways that you could have found that. You could have found that final velocity using equation five. You could have found it using um, uh, 
a combination of equation one and two. Uh, so there are many different ways to get that, uh, but those are kind of the simplest ways that I see to get this. So again, um, with, all these, uh, with all these problems, I want you to do the same thing every time, which is get your equations set up that I have up at the top here, all right, those, those, the, the nice set of equations that we have right up here, all right? And then circle the things that you don't know, uh, underline the things that you do, and it'll become very clear as you go through uh, what equations you should use to find your answer. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in class.